I'm Robert Teo, director of Pulau Ubin. I've been working in Ubin for 22 years. Back then, the last two granite quarries were wrapping up operations. But when they left, there were evident scars of the impact of these industries. Many areas were laid bare, devoid of vegetation. Fast forward to 2020, the island is now much greener than it has ever been since the 1960s. Many of the areas have been reclaimed by greenery, either natural regeneration or through the habitat enhancements uh, programs that we have uh, put in place. This is Pulau Wubin, known for its rustic charm and old school kampong vibe. But as biodiversity surveys recently confirmed, it is also a wildlife haven. But what makes this place so rich in life? Well, for one, it is the land in between. This high biodiversity is due largely to the variety of habitats that we have. Regenerating forests, secondary forests, uh, includes mangroves, uh, as well as uh, in Chikjawa, we have seagrass lagoon, we have coastal forests, we have grasslands and scrubland. No. But beyond that, these habitats also draw uh, wildlife from neighbouring countries. They establish themselves here, they breed, you know, and they themselves you know, may also then move on from Pulau Ubin to mainland Singapore. Ubin is a living laboratory with various projects underway to help the habitats flourish and wildlife recover like this floating wetlands initiative to expand foraging areas for animals on a disused quarry. Um, with these floating wetlands, you get the potential of um, bringing the wildlife closer to, to the public. We have a grey heron flying overhead right now. But also, you know, you get um, these sort of grassy, reedy wetland habitats that are really good for a whole bunch of other creatures as well. So kingfishers hopefully will come in. Maybe there's a kingfisher over there right now, right? But also, you know, for some of these migrating uh, wetland birds like grasshopper warblers and uh, reed warblers potentially will use these areas as habitats uh, while stopping over on migration as well. It is not just for the birds. Butterflies too are benefiting from these efforts. This is Butterfly Hill. It didn't look like this about 15 years ago when we first started. It was um, a dumping ground for the quarrying activities and we started to experiment with the number of uh, plants, you know, to add that attract butterflies, both the caterpillar host plants and the nectaring plants. The last 15 years, we've recorded nearly uh, two thirds of the number of species found in Singapore. During the comprehensive Ubin Biodiversity Survey, the rare swamp tiger butterfly was discovered. It was just one of the new animal species found during the survey. So there were a number of new birds that were found. Uh, one of which was a new species for Singapore. For mammals, we have three new species of bats that are new to Ubin. Spiders did really well with many new species for Singapore and that one that was new for science, meaning it's never been described before. But the diversity that Chikjawa wetlands yielded was way higher than anywhere else. That's mainly because of the number of different niches of habitats that are present here in Chikjawa. Uh, its proximity to the intertidals, uh, as well as the mangroves, the coastal forests. Okay, in the seagrass lagoon, you are likely to see some fishes moving around to find food. Uh, if you are really lucky, you might see a seahorse. You will see birds moving around these patches as well because they are hunting for fish. Yeah. Wati sea rubber. Very nice, beautiful colours. Yeah. Ooh, why is so like a gummy? It's a gummy, nice. Do you want to eat? So the shell is called the Nova Volute. Nova Volute. V O V O L U T E. Nova Volute is a snail. Come on, John, don't be shy. Come and say hello. Take a wee What is it? Leaf porter crab. So he always carry a leaf with him. So he will use this as a cover lah, so that people don't see it. Take it. Leaf right, porter crab. Hey, go back. Oh, Do you see him? There is this interesting um, sea star there we call the rock star. Right? So I usually I joke with my participant, how we know whether the rock star is under the rock, you listen to the rock, 
if the ban is playing, probably it's inside. There is life everywhere on Pulau Ubin, from rock stars in crevices to shy mouse deer in the forests. Some of them came here from elsewhere, travelling across the sea to get to this land in between. And where the habitats are, so the animals will be. Some of them have even made it onto the mainland. Well, I mean, you know, the street between Singapore and Pulau Ubin is not very, not very wide. Animals can swim over. I'm sure monitor lizards can easily cross, cross over, right? Um, what surprises me is that none of the crocodiles at Sungai Johor have actually crossed over here. They need to clear customs or something. So birds like uh, the hornbill. You know, the hornbills used to fly over from Johor and then, you know, we cycle and then wait uh, to catch a glimpse, right? Then later on, of course, they, are, they, they started using trees in Ubin and we're like, oh, okay, they are quite adaptable. And of course, you know, uh, they went from Changi and into Alexandra and, well, they've reached NUS. Ubin has been a source and then mainland Singapore is a sink. So this connectivity, uh, it's not a solid land bridge, right? It's just birds that are able to fly between forest patches. The other thing is, of course, uh, animals that swim, right? So uh, pig swam, uh, otters swam, right? So in the, in the late 90s, there were records of otters in Tekong and Ubin. We were having massive land reclamation, uh, there's a lot of habitat destruction and all that. And then when everything came down, we were lucky because Southern Johor was still a source. And so animals that uh, were finding their way uh, would find uh, Singapore, right? Uh, now there's a lot of development in southern coast of Johor and the Ubin, Pasir Ris, Changi area seems, you know, a bit calmer. Uh, maybe one day we can return the favour.